in this video I'll show you the easiest way to learn Blender basics really quickly. Let's go! Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and let me show you the bare minimum that you need to know to get up to speed with Blender as soon as possible. Now once you download it from blender.org and install it on your PC, you're gonna probably have a shot. But don't worry about it, do not be intimidated by the UI, you won't be needing most of the tools or menus anyways. We will go through the core features of the UI followed by the essential tools for creating your first model in this video. Now this is just an overview of Blender for beginners, but if you're serious about learning and want to go a bit more in depth, we have a fantastic free course called Jumpstart Hard Surface in Blender. It's been downloaded by over 45,000 people and they love it. It covers everything in great detail, including how to model your first impressive hard surface model in Blender. The link is in the video description, so go ahead and grab it now. Enjoy, as I mentioned, it's free. Now let's get back to our video. So let's start with the UI. It might seem overwhelming, but like I already said, you honestly won't be using most of the UI. Let me show you what's essential for beginners. It's straightforward and easy to understand. Okay guys, here in Blender, and first of all, my UI may look a bit different than yours, because when you first open Blender, it looks a bit different. My sort of set up. If you want to set up your UI the way I have it set up, go ahead and watch my video on that. I'm going to link to it in the video description. You can also see that video being displayed on the screen. So let's talk about the basics here. Now, first of all, we got T panel and N panel. If you press T or N, this panel is going to pop or collapse, right? T panel, don't worry about it. You're not going to be using it. N panel, it's kind of important because you can check your uh, object data. It's not visible now because we have no object in the scene. And also you can check all the add-ons here if you add them to Blender and you should be working with add-ons because they're gonna save you a lot of time. Now we're gonna go back to this end panel later on when we're gonna model something simple, okay? So it's just collapsed with N. Now at the top, we're gonna have three most important things here. So file, edit, and render. File is for opening and saving. Now edit here is for preferences where you can change settings for Blender, also add add-ons here. And then render when you click, you know, render image to render your scene. Now these here, don't worry about them. You're going to be working in layout. Forget about these for the time being. These are just presets. You can even delete them if you don't want them. You know, it's just rubbish. Don't worry about it. Transformation and pivot menus uh, mainly. So uh, when you move, scale or rotate, uh, these are quite important. Here, uh, the most important uh, ones are this one. So viewport shading, which is what you're seeing right now. And this one's gonna be rendered view. So when you wanna render something, you're gonna go to render view. And you can change here from cycles to EV. So you can switch between these two engines. I never use Workbench. Uh, and I mostly work with cycles, so just a rendering engine. So when you wanna render your work, that's where you go. But when you're gonna be modeling, you're gonna be in this one. This one is wireframe. You cannot see anything right now because I have no model, but uh, I never use this one, okay? So mostly gonna be here or here. And then you got this section here, which is uh, collections. So it's kind of like folders on your PC to organize your scene. And then this one is properties. So you can see your render engine, your output. So what kind of file you're gonna be outputting as a render. And then when you add an object to your scene, so let's press Shift A and add a cube, you're gonna see more options. The most important one is gonna be modifiers. We're gonna be talking about it in a minute and also materials, okay? And lastly, if you wanna see the scene statistics or VRAM usage, etc., you can right click here on this bar in the bottom and add it to this information here. Guys, that's literally it, okay? That's all you need to know. Don't have to worry about anything else. That's how simple it is. Now, like I said, we have an in-depth course that's free. It's called Jumpstart Hard Service in Blender. So if you wanna learn in-depth about all these, there's a whole section in that course devoted to setting the UI, you know, all the menus, etc. So you can go ahead and, you know, grab the course. Like I said, the course is free and the link is in the video description. Next, we have most basic commands like add and delete, move, rotate, scale, and of course the camera movement. Let's jump into Blender and let me show you how it all works. All right, so let's talk about basic commands. So shift A to add a cube. I'm gonna add a cube and now we're gonna move it. So press G to move it and then R and B to cancel, S to scale it and R to rotate it. Now you can use axes. You can see one of them here and the other one here. And the third one is hidden. If you go here, you can turn it on, Z axis, right? So you can move it on G, Z, Y, 
or X, right? Now, when you rotate this cube like that, you're going to enter something called local transformation. So G, Z, Z, because the X is moved with the rotation, right? G, X, X. See what I mean? And then you can also reset it. So if I move it here, rotate it and scale it, I can press Alt R to reset rotation, Alt G to reset location and Alt S to reset scale. Now you can see all these being reflected on end panels. So I press N, go to item, and watch what happens when I'm going to change scale, rotation, or location. Now you see why this is important, right? And then you can also delete an object, so X and delete. Now, camera movement, important. First of all, if you want to uh, navigate uh, your viewport, let me just add a cube again, so Shift A and a cube. If you press tilde key, which is the top left key near the one button, right? You see this kind of a pie menu. So if you're going to hover over the direction you want to go to, Blender will switch the um, the view. And then you can shift between perspective and orthographic by pressing numpad 5. Okay. Again, if you don't have a numpad, go here to edit preferences, go to input and emulate numpad. And here you can uncheck the auto save preferences, save it, and you're good to go. So this is quite useful when you want to align something in Blender. You can, you know, switch to, for example, right hand side view and orthographic, and then you can really uh, align stuff really well. Okay. Another thing that you need to know is moving the camera. So if you press middle mouse button, you can rotate the camera. If you hold shift and then press middle mouse button, you can actually pan it. And if you um, press control and middle mouse button, you can zoom it in or out you can also do it with a wheel okay so again middle mouse button shift middle mouse button control middle mouse button okay cool and that's it about basic commands in blender now let's talk about modifiers blender operates using modifiers which are added to the mesh to modify its state for example a bevel modifier adds a procedural bevel allowing for adjustments or removal at any time a mirror modifier on the other hand adds a mirror and so on now blender has a lot of modifiers but you're gonna be needing maybe five to maximum seven for 95 percent of your hard surface work let me show you quickly what's it all about now modifiers in blender are quite important these are here okay so if you go here and you're gonna see this whole list of rubbish don't worry about it you need like five okay you need boolean bevel mirror solidify weighted normals and maybe array and subdivision surface that's 99.9 percent .9 of times you're gonna be using this for modeling right i very rarely use anything else guys so for example if i add a bevel to a model you can see that it's a little bit faceted, but we're going to talk about smoothing later. I can add, for example, more segments here to make it a bit more smooth. And this modifier is live, meaning if I go to edit mode by pressing tab, I can still see my cube having one, two, three, four, five, six faces, right? But if I apply this modifier here and go to edit mode, now I can see that this modifier has become a geometry. So it's literally baked into my mesh, right? This is why modifiers are so great because you can remove them and your mesh stays unaffected. Let's now talk about edit mode and object mode. In Blender, you can manipulate with mesh in two modes, object mode and edit mode. Now object mode affects the entire mesh and edit mode allows you to work on faces, edges and vertices. Object mode is typically used for altering size, rotation or location, as well as adding modifiers. Now, edit mode is primarily used for editing the mesh shape or topology, working directly on faces, edges or vertices. This is also where you can fix most of the issues with your mesh, such as shading. Let's dive into Blender and let me show you how it works. Now, let's talk about the object and edit mode. It's quite important. So when you add an object to your scene, you're going to be in object mode. You can see it in here. Okay, don't worry about these. In order to switch between object and edit, you just simply select something and press tab and you're going to go to edit mode, press tab, object mode. Now in edit mode, you can select vertices, edges or faces here, right? You can press one, two or three. So one for vertices, right? Two for edges, okay? And three for faces, okay? So object mode is for large changes, like for example, SX to scale it, SY to scale it on Y axis, right? Then, for instance, uh, I don't know, add a, uh, add a bevel modifier or boolean. So, you know, we could just add a cube, right? And move it somewhere here and then shift click it and control minus uh, on a keyboard to create a boolean, etc. In edit mode, however, what you uh, can do 
is you can work on individual uh, elements. Like for example, you can grab this face here with G and GX and move, or GY and move just this face. You could insert it by pressing I, right? Then E to extrude and create something like this. You could grab individual verts by pressing one, grab these two and S, X, and for example, scale them like this. So you could manipulate with elements that um, basically creates this object. So that's the main difference between object mode and edit mode. Finally, let's have a look at the core tools you'll be needing for modeling. We will cover selections, edge loops, extrusions, insetting, and knife tool. So let's talk about basic tools we're gonna be using. First one is selections. You can just click on something. You can then press Alt A to deselect it or simply click here on a canvas to deselect it. If you have two objects selected, so Shift D to duplicate it, you can hold Shift and select them both, right? That's selections. In edit mode, if I press tab, you can press two for edges, click, hold control, click, click, or hold shift, right? And you know, these were the basic ones. You can also add loop uh, to this mesh, so control R. And loop's gonna only work for quad topology. So if you have a quad here, means four vertices, the loop's gonna go through the mesh. If you have an end gun, it won't. And the loop can be selected by holding Alt. So Alt click, it's gonna select the whole thing, right, around. Then you can move it like G, for example, GZ, Control B to add a bevel, and you know, add a few segments, and you got something like this, okay? Then we got the extrusions and insets. I already showed you that, but here it is. So select the face, press three, select the face, I to inset it, E to extrude it, S to scale it, then you can press R, Y, for example, right? So you can create some really interesting shapes very quickly with these tools. And lastly, knife tool is quite important. So let's go to top view, right? Orthographic, so number five, press K for knife. And let's click here, right? Click here, click here, and space. And then we can go to three with face, click this, E, and extrude it. And there you go, that's how you can add edges to your mesh to for example, extract or extrude some of the topologies. And guys, these are main tools that you would be using for, you know, 90% of your workflow in hard surface. Again, if you want to go a bit more in depth and see how it works in combination with creating a model, then go ahead and grab our jumpstart course. Like I said, it's free. Starting your first model is really easy. Start with large shapes. Begin by modeling basic shapes to become familiar with the tools and how modeling works in Blender. 3D is incredibly fun once you get the hang of it and understand the software. Now, blocky shapes are easy to manipulate and there are fewer things that can go wrong. It's an excellent way to learn. Start with something really simple, a simple project and progress from there. Now let's hop into Blender and see how that works. So when you start your first model, you wanna start with a block out, okay? So let's say, we're gonna grab a cube and S uh, X to scale it here and then S Y to scale it like that. Go to edit mode, press two for edges, control R, click, move your mouse, click, then press three for faces, click, E, extrude it, right? Two for edges, click, G, Y, so move on Y axis here. And you're starting to see what we're doing, shape of a basic gun, click here, right? Control B, now you see that there's a scale problem. This is a very common issue. You're gonna have to fix it. So let's just get out of it. Right mouse button to cancel. And let's go to object mode, press N. And you see the scale isn't uniform. The uniform scale should be one, one, one. So to fix that problem, you click on the object, control A and apply scale. You're gonna be doing this quite a lot. Then edge mode, and now you can create a chamfer or bevel, right? So let's create a chamfer here. Boom, awesome. Then shift A. Add a cube, right? G, Z, S, Y, scale it here, G, Y, move it in here, right? And we starting to get some gun shape, then shift A, you know, cylinder. And now we're gonna have to smooth it out, okay? So every single mesh that you add to Blender is gonna be faceted, so shaded flat. So what you wanna do is you wanna smooth it. So right click on the mesh and shade auto smooth. This will add shade smooth and also we'll add auto smooth here which is important this will tell blender which edges are supposed to be sharp okay and you have to do it for um for your mesh and for your cutters but we're going to talk about it a bit later so gy here rx 90 scale it in 
okay? S, Y, and you know, this is how you come up with basic shapes, guys, okay? G, Z, you have to start with block outs, okay? With something very basic, and you know, so you can sort of see the overall shape of what you're creating. Now, Shift D here, S, X to scale it like this, go to solid view, orthographic, G, hold Shift to slow down the movement, click here, Shift click, Control minus. Now for this Control minus to work, you need to have one of the add-ons uh, that comes with Blender enabled. It's called Bull Tool. Again, go ahead and watch my UI setup because it's important uh, for you to understand how it works. And click this here and save perhaps you're good to go. Then you can use the shortcut commands like Control minus, Control plus, and Control forward slash on the numpad to work with Booleans quickly. Grab this thing here, right? And here go to modifiers and let's apply this boolean right so it's going to become mesh so go to edit mode two four edges click shift click and then you know control b to uh, bevel it and there you go you had a very basic you know block out of your gun now this wired element here that's your cutter okay you can organize your cutters by pressing m new collection and then call it cutters right Click OK, and this cutter is going to automatically jump here to cutters. Press Shift 2 to hide or unhide collection number 2. You see this eyeball here being highlighted and disappearing? That's how you hide the collection. Same with collection number 1, OK? And there you go, guys. That's how you should work. And then when you have the basic block out, then you start adding details, more intricate elements, etc. OK, first you need to get the basic balance and shape of your model done. When working on polygons, we can't forget to mention shading. Clean shading is crucial for our models because a messy shading will look terrible in renders and negatively impact your portfolio. Sometimes the shading problems on the mesh can be so severe that they won't allow you to work with modifiers such as bevel. First, you need to run auto smooth and shade smooth on all meshes and all cutters so boolean auto smooth tells blender at what angle an edge connecting two faces should be displayed as sharp another way of controlling shading is weighted normal modifier after you add a bevel modifier to your mesh you need to add either weighted normal modifier or something called hard normals but we're not going to be talking about that now what it will do it will flex shading on flat faces add it to the mesh and keep it in the bottom of the stack of modifiers without applying it. Another way to maintain clean shading is by avoiding duplicated geometry, overlapping geometry and other types of non-manifold or flipped geometry. Now you can fix all these in edit mode. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, last section, let's talk about auto smooth and weighted normals and also the shading problems. So again, if you add a mesh here, right, and you add a bevel to it, so let me just right click and shade auto smooth, go to modifiers, click here. Um, add a bevel, you know, three segments, and then you see that the shading is actually not flexed. It's kind of wonky, you know, this, you see that this face? So what you can do is go here and add hard normals, but sometimes it doesn't work. What I prefer to do is I, I prefer to go with weighted normal. And it's gonna flex all your faces on your mesh. Now, remember two things. Weighted normal, never apply this modifier. And secondly, it should always be at the bottom. The modifier order yeah, it's really important, right? So for example, if I had a cube here, right? Scale it, go up, GX here, shift click, control minus. If this boolean, right, is above weighted normals, you see that doesn't get beveled because first you have bevel, then weighted normals, and then the boolean. If I move it above here, it's gonna be all messed up because the boolean wasn't beveled. This is why it's messed up. And now everything is correct. Now you can still see that there's a bit of a, a pinching here in the corner. To fix this, you need to go here to, um, to not to boolean, to bevel, right? Go to geometry and turn this sharp miter to arc, which will smooth out the bevels. And of course, you can change the size of it here by holding shift. Just move your mouse, you can change it to something smaller. And there you go. And that's how, you know, you can fix the basic shading on your model. However, that times where the shading gonna go completely crazy because you have for example non-manifold geometry so for instance you have a double vert like here i go to two click on this edge right click and subdivide and i'm gonna go to uh, one for verts grab this vert gg to slide it on this edge here and when i'm gonna add a bevel here right you'll see when i have problems okay 
so let me just increase this right and let me just uh, go here to turn off this clamp overlap and you see the problem here now let me show you what's happening if i go to wireframe what's happening is that the bevel is overshooting on itself that's what's happening this vert was turned into an edge and this edge when you create a larger bevel is going to go underneath other geometry this is one of the most common issues with uh, shading another one's going to be for example with insetting so two so let's go to edit mode two Control alt click to select the loop of edges around here we're gonna bevel them like this right then right click and shade smooth go to face mode select that and watch if i insert it too deeply yeah to look watch boom see what i mean the geo is gonna get collapsed on itself and you need to really avoid these because this is gonna bite you um, in the long run especially when you're gonna be rendering this so avoid this kind of issues now again in our course i'm covering this in depth we're going to be running into many many issues like this so go ahead grab this free course and uh you know get started with your journey in blender it's really fantastic and it will teach you all these uh, all these situations and how to handle them and these are all the essential basics that you need to know in order to start with blender but like i said earlier on we have a free course for you that can help you jumpstart your journey in blender the link is in the video description we also have a discord server with 3000 like-minded people which makes it one of the best places to get help with blender whenever you get stuck that's all for this video guys thanks for watching and i see you in the next one